Welcome to my two-part creative journaling series for beginners. In this first video, I'll explain what creative journaling is, provide an overview of my personal journey with it, and we shall go over some supplies to get started. While I am not an expert, I have gathered some knowledge from consistently doing this hobby for years now. I hope to pass on tips that can help you develop your own creative journaling style as a beginner. Let's start with the definition of creative journaling. Creative journaling incorporates creative elements like doodling, coloring, collaging, and more into your regular journaling practice to document your thoughts and life in a more visual way. I find creative journaling beneficial for many reasons. First, it helps reduce my stress and anxiety. Second, it boosts my creativity as I play with decorative supplies and experiment with new techniques. Third, it improves my mindfulness as I slow down to work on a page. And lastly, it gives me beautiful keepsakes to look back on for memories and inspiration. I've been journaling since I was a kid. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the classic Dear Diary kind, you know, journals with a little lock and key on it. This was my very first diary that I got when I was young. I filled it cover to cover with my innermost thoughts and secrets at the time. And here are some of the other diaries I kept over the years as a child and teenager. As you can see, it was all just pure writing back then. But journaling those early years started my love for documenting my life and thoughts on paper. Back then, I didn't journal creatively because I didn't feel confident in my drawing abilities. But then in 2015, I discovered creative journaling which incorporates elements like coloring, collaging, scrapbooking, and more. Creative journaling showed me you don't need to be skilled at drawing to journal artistically. So I gave it a try and got hooked. Here are some of the creative journals I've completed over the years. As you can see, I like to categorize them. I have a memory keeping journal.
journals made from repurposed paper materials. travel scrapbook journals to document my adventures. Since 2015, I've filled up many journals using creative techniques I've learned and it becomes a fun hobby that I really look forward to. I try to journal creatively at least a few times a week. I like to set aside time in the morning when I can relax and get into a creative flow. There are so many ways to incorporate creative journaling into your life. Start small by dedicating 15 minutes a few times a week to start. Pick a cozy spot, play some music, light a candle, and let your creative juices flow as you journal. See where your unique style takes you. Now, a common misconception is that you need great artistic skills or drawing skills to pursue this hobby. But for me, that's absolutely not true. You can be as simple or advanced as you want. While some illustrate beautifully in their journals, you don't need to be gifted in that area to reap the benefits. Even if you cannot draw, you can still adorn your journal pages through simple techniques which I will teach you in the series. Now, I want to go over the types of supplies you'll want to have on hand to start creative journaling. The great thing about getting started with creative journaling is that you don't need expensive stationary supplies and art tools. Use whatever you already have on hand to begin. When I first started creative journaling, I only had a few basic supplies on hand and gradually built my collection over time. It's so easy to feel overwhelmed and tempted to buy everything you see on social media or in stores when you're starting out. In fact, I went through a phase early on where I got addicted to buying new journaling and stationery supplies. Good thing I came to my senses. So if you're just beginning this hobby, I suggest being intentional with your purchases and avoid the trap of overspending especially on supplies you may not use. Start simple with what you already have. In my journaling process videos on this channel, you may have noticed I use a variety of stationary supplies to decorate my pages. These are items I've collected since 2015 and I try to make the most use out of them before buying anything new. You absolutely don't need to buy those exact products I use. I encourage you to repurpose and find cheaper alternatives that fit your budget. Thrift stores can be a great source for vintage ephemera, or you can search online for free ephemera or free digital stickers. Many artists are generous in giving away printable options to use. Explore low-cost options to build your own unique supply stash as you go. 
I love using free ephemera that I collect as I go about my daily life. Things like restaurant napkins with fun logos, paper placemats from cafes, brochures from museums and attractions when I travel. Keep your eyes open for unique pieces you can incorporate in your journals. I keep this free Pieces of Amera organized in a clear book organized by month. This way, I have a stash of collage materials that I can easily locate whenever I have time to decorate on my scrapbook or memory keeping journal pages for the month. Old magazines are also a free source of images and illustrations to cut out and collage in your journal pages. Browse through what you already have at home. The possibilities are truly endless when you start thinking creatively about free materials to use. Of course, you can invest in fancier supplies over time. But part of the fun is discovering free or low-cost items to repurpose. It adds uniqueness and sentimental value to your pages. So don't think you need to buy expensive stationery writery. Look around for free or inexpensive supplies you already have access to and let your creativity flow. The most essential supply is of course a journal or a notebook. You can start with notebooks you already have on hand in your stash, but if you're buying a new one specifically for creative journaling, here are some things you can consider. First is size. Do you want something larger like an A5, a B6 size, or smaller and more portable like a pocket or passport notebook? Larger gives you more room to work, while smaller notebook is great for travel journaling. Second is paper type. Thicker papers works best for mediums like paints and markers. Choose paper with some texture for interest. I suggest to avoid very thin paper that will bleed, except if it is a specialty paper like Tomoy River. Tomoy River is very thin yet highly resistant to bleeding. So it can work well with fountain pen inks and it also copes beautifully with watercolor paints. I personally like to use MD paper or Tommy River paper because they hold up well with mediums I enjoy using, such as stamp inks, brush pens, markers, gel pens, and fountain pens. A brand of MD paper notebook is Traveler's Company. I also love the Tomei River paper used in Hobonichi notebooks. Other brands of notebooks for journals that I've used and love are Stalogy, Rhodia, and Midori. I also recommend looking for acid-free paper which will preserve your work over time. Avoid journals with highly acidic paper which will turn yellow and become brittle. Line paper is good if you want to incorporate regular writing, while well, blank or unlined pages gives you more freedom if you want to doodle randomly across a page. Grid and dot grid papers provide a subtle guide while still allowing open creativity. Dot grid has dots at intersections instead of a full grid for very light guidance. So I suggest to choose what fits your style best. Next is binding. Spiral binding allows pages to lay flat but can create gaps and the coils can be uncomfortable to write on. Stapling pages together yourself is a simple binding method. Just be mindful of staple thickness and length to avoid puncturing through pages. Sewn bindings like book binding stitch pages together for a classic and secure journals. You can stitch by hand if you plan to make journals on your own, like what I did in this notebook. 
Some other creative hand binding techniques include string binding, screw post, and disc binding. Some journals have perforated pages, pockets, or envelopes built in to hold bits and pieces. These type of built-in extras can be really nice to have for attaching ephemera or holding loose items securely in your journal. When browsing journal options, keep an eye out for fun added features like these that suit your style. Another great option that I'd like to recommend is to make your own custom journal. I like to create what are called junk journals by repurposing and upcycling things like old books, magazines, and scrap papers into handmade journals. The benefits of making your own creative journal include First is cost savings. You can make them for free or very cheap if you use recycled materials you already have on hand. Second, it's customizable. You can sew, glue, or staple the pages together however you like and decorate the cover to match your style. Third, it is unique. No two handmade journals are exactly alike when you repurpose found materials into something new. Fourth, sentimental value. Adding bits of ephemera that already have meaning to you makes the journal even more special. And lastly, it is fun and creative. Making the journal itself can be a hugely satisfying creative process. So don't be intimidated to try making your own creative journal, whether it is upcycling an old book or stapling together scrap papers. It takes your journaling experience to the next level. I'll be sure to cover DIY journal ideas in more detail in a future video. In summary, take some time browsing options to find a journal you're excited about for your needs. Most importantly, choose a journal that sparks creativity and speaks to you. Next, you'll want some writing and coloring tools. I seldom doodle on my pages, so I'll focus more on essential writing and coloring supplies. For writing, make sure to have basic black for journaling text. I like having a wide variety of pen tips, colors, and styles to switch between for interest. I suggest to start with a few affordable options like gel pens or fine liners. Color gel pens or fine liners add fun pops of color for titles and accents. For coloring, great basics to start with are colored pencils if you already have those on hand in your stash. Colored pencils are affordable and let you shade large areas in a range of hues. Later on, if you have a budget, you can upgrade to watercolors and brush markers if those suit your coloring techniques. Brush markers have flexible tips that let you create color blends. Some quality brush marker brands are Tombow and Zig Clean Color. Aside from pencils and markers, you can use highlighters for emphasizing text and adding pops of color. My favorite highlighters for creative journey are Zebra Midliners. Midliners have soft, mild color tips perfect for highlighting over journal text. The colors add a subtle pop without obscuring what's underneath. They come in great shades too. To embellish your pages, you can use supplies like stickers, washi tapes, stamps, and ink pads. You can also add texture and interest with things like textured paper, stencils, and more. First are stickers. Stickers come in a variety of themes and styles ranging from whimsical, kawaii, or vintage designs allowing you to personalize your pages according to your mood or the content of your writing. Next are washi tapes. With their diverse patterns and colors can be used to frame sections of your journal, create borders, or add a visual interest on specific entries. Third are rubber or clear stamps. Paired with ink pads, provide an excellent way to introduce intricate design patterns or theme imagery into your journal. Since I'm not good in drawing, stamps became my favorite stationary supply. 
They are versatile and I can reuse them for unlimited times. Good quality stems can be expensive so it is essential to weigh your options, choose carefully, and consider your budget before diving into the stamping world. For added texture and interest, explore options like textured paper, stencils, and other crafting materials. Textured paper can be used as a background or layer to enhance specific sections of your journal. Stencils offer a versatile way to create consistent patterns, lettering, shapes, or backgrounds, adding a professional and polished look to your pages. Other basic tools you must have includes a good pair of scissors for cutting, adhesives like double-sided tape, glue, or glue sticks to secure everything down. In summary, slowly build your collection of stationary writing and art tools tailored to your journaling. Affordable options are perfectly fine when starting out, allowing you to explore and discover what works best for you without breaking the bank. While these embellishments can significantly enhance your journaling experience, it's important to exercise a degree of restraint. With the vast array of stationary supplies available, it's so easy to go down the rabbit hole and accumulate more than you need. To avoid overwhelm, start small and gradually build your collection as you become more comfortable with different techniques and styles. As you progress in your journaling journey, you may find yourself drawn to specific brands or types of tools that suit your preferences. Investing in higher quality items can be a rewarding step once you identified your favorites. However, always remember that the joy of journaling lies not only in the tools you use, but in the act of self-expression and reflection that accompanies the creative process. So take your time, enjoy the exploration, and let your journaling tools become an extension of your creative self. In my next video, I'll be diving into specific techniques and tips for getting started with creative journaling, especially if you're a complete beginner. I'll share easy tips for ways to decorate your pages using supplies you likely already have on hand, as well as tips for making creative journaling an enjoyable habit you look forward to. Let me know in the comments if there are any specific tips or techniques you'd like me to cover in the next video. I look forward to helping you start your creative journaling journey. Thank you for watching.